IOG launches a toolkit for developing custom sidechains on Cardano. New cryptographic primitives make cross-chain dApp development easier and more secure, and the Cardano Foundation attends the World Economic Forum, spreading the message of blockchain for good. It's time for the Weekly Report. Welcome back to Woodland Pools. Today it's time for the Weekly Report. Let's jump in. IOG launches a toolkit for developing custom sidechains on Cardano. So IOG has assembled a team of specialists to use the rock-solid foundation of Cardano to build a toolkit for building custom sidechains sidechains. And so the idea being that anybody can use this toolkit and spin up their own sidechain depending on the needs they have for their project or their blockchain or their broader ecosystem. They also constructed an Ethereum virtual machine, an EVM compatible sidechain public testnet as a proof of concept. So we now have the toolkit itself as well as an EVM sidechain that's up and running showing how it can be used. And here's the most important part for those not too familiar with sidechains. Sidechains make Cardano extensible and more scalable without compromising the stability or security of the main chain. And we'll dig into this a little bit more here in a second. But with this toolkit, anyone can start to leverage Cardano's security and infrastructure to create mission-specific sidechains. The EVM sidechain proves the feasibility of this concept, and all of this work is being shared with the Cardano community and will be fully open source. And as of when this was published, they've already made the first tranche of documentation available, so anybody that wants to use the script can dig through this and get more information. So let's take a look at how the toolkit's actually going to work. So a sidechain is simply a blockchain that depends on the main chain and is connected to it. The toolkit allows the sidechain to have its own consensus mechanism and all of its own features, and then it's connected to the main chain through a bridge that allows asset transfer between the chains. And here's the most important part. The finality of blocks is determined through a consensus mechanism that relies on the security of the main chain. So with side chains, you can kind of get the best of both worlds. You can have your side chain that has its own needs and maybe a completely different consensus mechanism. So how you determine fees, transactions, what blocks are real, what order they come in, how they're propagated, all of that can live on your side chain. And then when you're done executing that logic and you want to write something back to the main Cardano chain, then you would connect through the bridge that's established and you have the Cardano consensus and finality to rely on as your main chain and your immutable record of information. So for something like the EVM side chain that they mentioned earlier, you could basically take a dApp that's running on Ethereum, bring it over, launch it on the EVM side chain. The code for the dApp itself would be pretty much identical. And then all you need to do is take this code that's running on your true Ethereum side chain and then add the bridge that sends the final transactions back to the Cardano main chain whenever you want to have that settlement. So if we take a look at what the toolkit's going to look like, you've got the main chain Plutus scripts, and these are the scripts that'll run Cardano's main chain, enable secure cross-chain transaction and token movement back and forth, and these will have the Cardano minting policies that will support the side chain's token. Then we have a chain follower. This chain follower is going to track the main chain data and the events that govern the side chain. This will basically give your side chain a way to track and follow the main chain so you can respond as you need to on your side chain dependent on things happening on the Cardano main chain. And then this full sidechain module is the module that's part of the sidechain client, and it's going to interpret that main chain data and implement the necessary ledger adaptations. These are your main chain scripts running on Cardano. Here's your Plutus script. Here's your minting of native Cardano assets that are going to work with your sidechain. Here's a sidechain module that with this chain follower can keep synced up and tracking what's going on in the main chain. And then your Plutus scripts would be tied to the smart contracts on the sidechain. And then here, you have the tokens living on the side chain that are kept in sync back and forth through this follower and the minting and burning of the Cardano native assets. So now in terms of who can use this, blockchain developers, dApp developers, and stake pool operators can all benefit from this. For the blockchain and dApp developers, it obviously makes sense. They can stand up their side chain and run whatever kind of logic they need and then connect back to the Cardano main chain to have that for settlement. But additionally, these side chains need to be run somewhere and the work that's done on them needs to be run by someone. And so it totally makes sense to take advantage of the over 3,000 and stake pools that there are in the Cardano community. And I think moving forward, this is yet another example of how we're going to see the existing stake pool ecosystem be utilized over and over again for all of these additional layers that are building on top of Cardano. Next, building on that notion of making interoperability easier, new Cardano cryptographic primitives will bring greater interoperability and secure cross-chain dApp development. To make it easier for developers to build cross-chain applications, IOG is adding new built-in functions to Plutus to support both ECDSA 
Shay and Schnorr signatures. Different blockchains use different cryptographic signature algorithms, and this is done for different reasons. For example, Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm, ECDSA, is used by Bitcoin and Ethereum. Schnorr signatures are used in a bunch of other blockchains, including Polkadot. Now, Cardano uses the Edwards Curve Digital Signature Algorithm, EDDSA, and the reason why IOG chose this for Cardano, it gives fast signature verification and smaller signature sizes, which helps improve the overall performance and security of the blockchain. Monero, Ripple, and some others also use this same signature algorithm. But the thing is, even though there's some that use the same as Cardano, this variance in algorithms means that Plutus Dapp developers who want to work with other blockchains and need to validate ECDSA and Schnorr signatures would have to spend time, effort, and funds to write their own algorithms to be able to utilize these different encryption methodologies. So to make it easier for developers to build cross-chain applications, IOG has added new built-in functions for Plutus to support ECDSA and Schnorr signatures. And this new signature functionality is enabled in the latest Cardano node version 135.4. The Aspen stake pool and over 80% of block producing nodes are now running this version. And so based on that, we should expect a hard fork to version 135.4 on February 14th. This is relatively speaking a much smaller change than what the Vazel upgrade was, but we should expect to continue seeing small tweaks just like this focused on scalability, Voltaire for self-governance, and also a big focus on these kinds of things for interoperability and bringing in other developers and other chains into the Cardano ecosystem. Next, the World Economic Forum was this week, and it's great to see that the Cardano Foundation, who's already in Switzerland anyway, is going to be hosting a panel there. They're putting together a panel called Blockchain for Good, and we see some familiar faces like Frederick from the Cardano Foundation. And the goal of the panel is using specific examples. They want to show how blockchain technology can help improve living conditions, for example, in the reconstruction of destroyed infrastructure in Ukraine, providing humanitarian aid, and giving access to the 3 billion people who have no access to the traditional financial system, as we always say, banking the unbanked. I think this is really exciting for two reasons. One, it shows that while some people complain and say, I wish the Cardano Foundation was a little bit more visible, it shows that they are inserting themselves into these big events that have huge players from around the world. And two, for all the negative press that we've been seeing with blockchain and cryptocurrencies lately, I love that the panel they've involved themselves in is specifically, what are the things that we can do to make the world better using blockchain? For the Cardano Foundation, very well done, keep it up. And before we head out, I know it's been a minute, so I wanna stop and say a huge thank you and welcome Welcome to all of our newest delegators. I think I've gotten all of you on here, but I wanted to stop and say thank you so much for your support. We truly appreciate it, and we're so excited to be on this journey with you. Let's keep growing together. Next week should be Cardano 360, so look for a recap on that. Let me know what you're most excited about, and if nothing else, we'll see you next week.